In this video, we're going to go over the endocrine system. I'm going to do this by going through each one of the organs one by one and discussing the hormones that they create and talking a little bit about the response that these hormones produce in the body. All right, so what is the endocrine system? Well, the endocrine system is the second major control system in the body, next only to the nervous system. So while the nervous system sends out electrical impulses to communicate, the endocrine system is going to send out hormones for communication. And these hormones are going to act as chemical messengers telling your body to perform certain tasks. And hormone comes from the Greek word hormon, which means to set in motion. And that's exactly what they do. They set things in motion. All right, let's take a look at the major endocrine organs and talk a little bit about the hormones that they produce. But before we do this, keep in mind there are two types of endocrine organs. There are true endocrine glands that do nothing else but make hormones. And then there's also not true endocrine organs that have other functions in your body, but also make hormones. So producing hormones is not their primary function. All right, so the first endocrine organ we're gonna go over is the pineal gland, which is found in the brain. This gland is kind of P-shaped and it's part of the epithalamus. And the hormone that it's responsible for creating is melatonin, which you might've heard of before because it's an important hormone in the regulation of sleep. All right, next we're gonna go over the pituitary gland, which is also known as the hypophysis. And this gland is commonly referred to as the master gland because it controls many of the other glands in the endocrine system. And the pituitary is broken up into two lobes, an anterior lobe and a posterior lobe. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the difference between each one, mostly because I wanted this video to be just an introduction to the endocrine organs and the hormones that they produce. But we can at least describe which hormones come from which lobe. Now the pituitary gland is cradled inside the cella tersica, which is a structure in the sphenoid bone of the skull. And the pituitary works jointly with the hypothalamus. So it's really these two working together to create that master gland or master organ. And they're connected by a stalk-like structure called an infundibulum. So this is how the hypothalamus and pituitary will communicate with each other. All right, so now we're gonna start with the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And the hormones that come from this lobe can be broken down into tropic or non-tropic. And what we mean by tropic is that there's a cascading effect, which is just a fancy way of saying that this hormone is gonna cause other hormones to be released somewhere down the line versus the not tropic hormones, which is gonna have a direct effect on the body. And the first tropic hormone we're gonna cover is the adrenocorticotropic hormone, also known as ACTH. And the target of this hormone is the cortex of the adrenal gland. So since it's tropic, it's going to tell the adrenal gland to release hormones, which will then have an effect on the body. Then we have thyroid stimulating hormone, also known as TSH, and the target is going to be the thyroid gland, causing the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormones into the bloodstream. And next we have follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, and the target of this hormone is the gonads, so the ovaries in females and the testes in males. And it's going to cause these gonads to release different hormones, like estrogen or testosterone but it also aids in the production or the maturation of the follicle in females and sperm production in males. And usually when FSH is released, another hormone is released with it called luteinizing hormone, which is also gonna target the gonads. And it's gonna cause the release of estrogen and progesterone in females and testosterone in males. And in females, it serves an important role in ovulation. And then we have the non-tropic hormones of the anterior pituitary. And there's really only two major ones. And remember, because they're not tropic means they have a direct effect on the body. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the growth hormone, also known as GH. And the target of these hormones is most of the tissues in the body, but specifically muscle and bone. And it's gonna stimulate growth in protein synthesis. And the final hormone of the anterior pituitary is prolactin. And the target of prolactin is mammary glands. And what it's gonna do is cause the production of milk. So that's it for the anterior pituitary. So now I'm gonna move on to the posterior pituitary and there's really only two hormones that I wanted to cover here. The first one is called oxytocin, which is famously known as the love hormone. And the reason it got this name is because we see increased levels of oxytocin in the blood during times of admiration. They've done studies where they see spikes of oxytocin when let's say a mother is staring into their child's eyes and people who are in relationships tend to have higher levels of oxytocin in their blood versus people who are single. 
And we see it in other animals too. So we see increased oxytocin in dogs when dogs are looking at their owners and vice versa. So there's two important target organs of oxytocin. And the first one is the uterus because this hormones release for contraction in the uterus during childbirth. And then the other one is back to the mammary glands where oxytocin is gonna play a role in lactation. Now you might remember from the anterior pituitary we had that prolactin. Well prolactin is more used for milk production while oxytocin is going to be used for milk ejection. And then the final hormone of the pituitary gland is antidiuretic hormone or ADH. And the target of this hormone is the kidneys. So this hormone is released to stimulate the kidneys telling the kidneys to reabsorb water from the urine. All right so that's it for the pituitary gland. Now we're going to move on to the rest of the organs in the body. All right, now let's look at two endocrine organs that are found in the neck, and that's the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. The thyroid gland is this butterfly-shaped gland that's in the front of the neck, and two important hormones that it makes is thyroxine and triiodothyronine. And thyroxine is also known as T4, while triiodothyronine is also known as T3, but together they're known as thyroid hormone. And the target of these hormones is most of the cells in the body. And that's because it's responsible for increasing the basal metabolic rate of the cells. Another hormone that the thyroid gland makes is calcitonin. And calcitonin's target is bones of the body. And what that is really doing is preventing osteoclasts from breaking down bones and releasing calcium into the blood. So you usually see this hormone being released when you have high blood calcium levels. And then we have the parathyroid glands. Now we usually have two of them, but some people could have more. And they're mostly found on the back or the posterior side of the thyroid, but they could also be found in other parts of the neck. And the major hormone that they produce is parathyroid hormone, also known as PTH. And what parathyroid hormone is going to do is target the bones and kidneys. And in the bones, it's going to stimulate osteoclasts to break down bone and put calcium into the bloodstream. Well, it's going to tell the kidneys to reabsorb calcium from urine. And in both cases, the overall effect is increasing the blood calcium levels. And next we have the thymus, which is located just behind the sternum and the thoracic cavity. And with the thymus, it's most prevalent when you're an infant. And then by the time you hit puberty, it starts to atrophy, which is just a fancy word for deteriorate. And by the time you hit old age, like 75 or so, it's almost completely gone. Now there's three major hormones that this organ produces. There's thymulin, thymosins, and thymopoietins. And they're all very important in the production of T cells, which is a type of white blood cell. Now, because this organ atrophies as you get older, it's one of the major reasons why you should let your kids get dirty and get germy. Because they do have a short window where they can maximize their ability to create an immune response to those germs. All right, moving down the body, we come to the adrenal glands, which look like two little pieces of chewed up gum that are stuck to the kidneys. And to really understand what's going on in the adrenal glands, we need to take a cross-section of it. So the adrenal gland is broken up into two parts. We have an inner medulla, which is mostly nervous tissue, and then we have an outer cortex, which is glandular tissue. With the medulla, it is part of the sympathetic nervous system, and it's triggered by the sympathetic nervous system. So what happens is the sympathetic nervous system will send an impulse to the medulla, which will then release epinephrine and norepinephrine into the bloodstream. And it does this in a specific ratio at 80% epinephrine and 20% norepinephrine. Now the target of these two hormones is all the cells in the body and it helps produce the fight or flight response. Then we get to the cortex and it's broken up into three zones. We have the zona glomerulosa, the zona fasciculata, and the zona reticularis. And each one produces a different type of hormone. With the glomerulosa, we're producing mineral corticoids, which is going to target the kidney to instruct the kidney to reabsorb sodium. Then in the fasciculata, we have glucocorticoids, which is going to target most of the cells in the body. And it's going to tell these cells to break down fats and proteins. And then we have the reticularis, which is going to create gonadocorticoids. And this is going to target many tissues in the body, like bones and muscles. And it's mostly used for female growth development. So all the organs we looked at so far are considered to be true endocrine organs. But now we're going to look at a couple that are not true endocrine organs, meaning being part of the endocrine system is not their primary function. And the first one we're going to look at is the pancreas. The primary function of the pancreas is to release digestive enzymes into your small intestine, while its responsibility in the endocrine system is to regulate blood glucose levels. 
And it's going to do this by releasing two different types of hormones, insulin and glucagon. Now the target of insulin is most of the cells in the body, and what it's going to do is tell these cells to take in glucose from the bloodstream, versus glucagon, whose target is the liver and adipose tissue. And what this is going to do is cause the breakdown of glycogen to produce glucose and release the glucose into the bloodstream. And the last organs we're gonna talk about is the gonads, which are ovaries in females and testes in males. And again, these are not true endocrine organs, because their primary function is to produce gametes, which is the eggs in females and the sperm in males. Now they are part of the endocrine system because they do produce hormones. The two hormones that are produced by the ovaries is estrogen and progesterone. And they're gonna serve roles in female maturity development and regulating the menstrual cycle. While the testes in males are gonna produce testosterone, which is gonna be important in the development of male maturity and the production of sperm. All right, so that covers most of the endocrine organs and the hormones they produce. So hopefully this video gives you a better understanding of the endocrine system.